an alarm clock will function. Ninety-eight percent of the time. Okay, and I'm running out of black. Oh, she were these bad ones or these are good ones? Bad. Okay. What's the probability? That you will wake up in time for work. Okay? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Uh, what's the key, though? What's the pro purpose of, of having two alarm clocks? These two clocks are supposed to function how? Independently. Is that true? What does it mean that they're supposed to be independently? Work independently. Yeah. In other words, if one fails, it's not supposed to impact whether or not the other one works or fails. Is that true? They're supposed to be independent of one another. Is that creepy or what? It's creepy. They're supposed to work independently of one another. Is that true? So if one fails, the other one's supposed to still be OK. Do you guys know that this happens a lot? Eddie, what is this called in uh, networking? A redundant what? Right, so how many hard drives did that system have before it crashed? Three? Okay, this is what we're going to talk about. Okay. This system has two alarm clocks working independently. So if one fails, the other one's okay. There's no relationship, right? You guys, you guys with me on this? I could write down what that means in you know, a little more uh, detail, but this is what I want to point out to you, the purpose of doing this. So, fine. What does it mean then to ask, what's the probability that you wake up on time? Some of your questions are going to be phrased this way, and you guys are going to go, I don't know what they're talking about. When they say, what's the probability that you wake up on time, what is the criteria for waking up? Yes. What is it, Gabby? The criteria is that, that what? Waking up, what needs to happen? Waking up is equivalent to saying what? Let's be careful with the language. What do you need to wake up? What do you need? Which, which alarm clocks? Good. At least one has to work. You see what I'm saying? Yes, exactly. At least one functions correctly. So at least one functions. Is that true? At least one functions. What if, what if they both function? Is that OK? Yes, because at least one means one or more. That's the key to these problems. Some of you guys are going to look at this and go, I don't know what's going on. It's like, well, because what it means for you to wake up is that at least one of the alarm clocks has to work or function. At least one. One or both, or one or more. Okay, you guys okay with that? So at least one has to function good. This is an at least one question. So the probability that at least one clock functions, what, did you, what do you guys know about that? What does that mean? Isn't that what? One minus the probability that, what is it? That none what? None function. Okay? One minus the probability that none function. So, how many alarm clocks am I using? Two. So, for none to function, that means the first, first is not what? Doesn't function. And what else? The second what? 
does not function. You guys with me on this? They both do not function. So if I can compute that, prob that probability here, these two probabilities, guess what? I'm home free. Is that true? Because I guess just get that value and multiply it by what? I'm sorry. I get those two probabilities and I subtract it from one. You guys okay with this? You guys okay with that? Okay, here's the deal. How do you deduce the probability that an alarm clock does not function? How do you deduce that probability? What does it say? An alarm clock will function what? 98% of the time. What does that mean? What does that mean? That the probability it will function is what? What is it? It's point nine eight. This is a percent. It is not a probability. But sometimes they're going to give you the language of percent to represent this. So that's why you have to be able to go back and forth. 98% is 0.98. True? Good. Now, what are you going to use here? How are you going to deduce? This is the probability that it will function. It's 0.98. How do you deduce the probability that it will not function? How do you know it's zero, uh, 0 0.02, Gabby? OK, how else do you know? What did you do to get the answer? Note, the probability it will not function, this is what she did, is 1 minus the probability at what? Will function. This is a computation that she used in her head to deduce that this is 0 0.02. You see what I'm saying? She did that, but she used 100%. Well, 100% 1 in probability language. See what I'm saying? You said, Gabby said, it's 100% minus 98%, which is 2%. You're right. But in terms of probability, it's 1 minus 0 0.98 which gives you 0 0.02. So this is the likelihood it will not function. Every alarm clock has, is reliable to a certain percentage. Everything that's mechanical is reliable to a certain percentage. You go to fry by a hard drive, a certain percent will function. A certain percent will not. These computers, a certain percent will what? Function, a certain percent will not. You buy anything that's mechanical, you buy a light bulb, a certain percent will function, a certain percent will not, just, by, just from the start. Okay, just from the start, you go out and buy something. You guys ever have the experience when you went out and you purchased something and you tried it and it was what? It wasn't working. Is that you ever had that experience, or is it just me? What are you thinking, Dre? You ever had that experience? What did you buy that didn't work? Okay, <laughs> a certain percent. You buy, go out the door. A certain percent are what are bad. OK? So it's, it, you could get a bad curling iron or bad anything. Bad TV, bad radio, bad iPod. OK, a certain percent will not work. A bad alarm clock happens 2% of the time. So what's the deal then? That probability applies to the first and the what? And the second. What if you had three alarm clocks? 